So what we're looking at now is a standard terminal window with a Unix shell. This programming environment is more than 30 years old and it's still in widespread use because it's one of the most productive environments for computing ever invented. And many of the other tools that you're going to work with have borrowed ideas from it and imitated it. By the end of these videos, we hope you'll understand why. The short answer is that it allows you to automate things, it allows you to reuse work without retyping. And this is an advantage over most GUI interfaces. Let's do a few simple things first before we dive more into the theology. First thing I want to do is type, who am I? All is one word. And it says that I am currently logged in as the user Mozilla. All right, that's useful information. Where am I? Well, you might think it would be called, where am I? But there is no such command. The actual command to figure out what folder or directory you're currently in, where you are on the computer, is PWD. It stands for Print Working Directory. Right now, I am in slash users slash Mozilla. And at this point, I need to explain two things. Actually, I need to explain one thing and then apologize for another. The apology is Unix commands have very cryptic names. They all made sense to somebody at some point. But back in 1970, when all of this was being invented, people were actually typing at terminals that printed on paper that were very, very slow. So they tried to give commands very short names. PWD is not what you would immediately think of if you want to know, where am I? But we're stuck with it now. And we will see other commands that have even less memorable names. And when we start to look at the options for commands, we'll discover that they're often inconsistent because they were invented by different people at different times. Now, this isn't the only inconsistent language in the world. If you've ever had to learn English as a foreign language and figure out English verbs, Unix is a lot better than English verbs. But that's like saying that being bashed on the thumb is better than being bashed on the head. There's nothing I can do but apologize for this. Now the second thing is, let's have a look at the answer from PWD. It says slash users slash Mozilla. The files on the computer are organized into directories which can contain directories which can contain directories all of those directories can also contain files. And you've seen this. If you open up a standard file explorer, you'll see folders, and when you double-click them inside it, you can see files and folders, and when you double-click on those folders, they open up, and so forth. We need a way to write all of that out. And the way we do in Unix is by using slashes, like the ones you see here. The root of the file system, the very top level, is just called slash. And if I say ls slash, I get a listing, that's what ls stands for, of all of the things that are right at the very top level of all the files on this computer. And on a Mac, I have applications, library, network, system, users, volumes, a whole bunch of other things that we're not going to go into. Underneath that is users. Slash users means start at the very root and go down to the users folder. As you can see on this laptop that I'm borrowing, there are only three. Shared, Mozilla, and Visitor. And then I can ls slash users slash Mozilla. And it says, here are the things that are in the folder, users, Mozilla. Desktop documents, downloads, libraries, etc., etc., etc. Now, I just did something tricky here. I said ls space slash users slash m, and then I press the tab key. And the computer automatically filled in the rest of what I would have had to type. In fact, I could type ls slash u tab m tab and get the same answer. This seems like a small thing, but it's actually the first example we've seen today of the thing that makes the shell so powerful. The computer can do work for you. It can fill things in for you. You shouldn't have to type slash U-S-E-R-S -E slash M-O-Z or Z-I-L-L-A over and over again. The computer knows that there's only one possible thing you could want after you've typed slash U. Because if we take a look in slash, 
the only thing that begins with a U is users. So once I've typed ls slash u, the computer can fill in the rest when I hit tab. Number one, that reduces the typing I have to do. Saves strain on the hands. Number two, it's faster. Number three, and most important, it's more accurate. The only thing you can do by doing more typing is make more mistakes. So, rule number one, if the computer can do it, let the computer do it. And the corollary to that, I think it's a corollary, I've forgotten some of my math, is that programmers are really lazy and good programmers are very lazy. If there's a way to get the computer to do something automatically, some programmer somewhere will have figured it out. All you have to do is find it. Okay, so let's come back and take a look. LS, here's what I've got in my home directory. Because as you can see, I typed LS and I didn't give it any arguments. I didn't say LS slash users. I just said ls. So without any options, ls says, I'll show you what's in the folder you're currently in. It tries to do the sensible thing that you'll want most often when you give it the least information. Let's try this. ls dash capital F. Dash is how you introduce options or flags. It's the way you say this isn't the thing you're supposed to process, this is how you're supposed to process it. Now this is just a convention. Different Unix commands can and historically have used different ways to introduce flags. But what almost everybody has settled on for almost all commands is dash followed by a letter. So when I do ls-f, it shows me folders with a trailing slash and plain files like this file first.record without the trailing slash so that I can see very easily what's a folder and what isn't. Let's try that. Lulus-f slash. All right. In the very root of my file system, the very top level of this computer, I've got a bunch of directories. I've got a bunch of things with a funny at sign after them and no files. What about ls slash users? The things with the at sign at them, we're not going to explore in this introductory material. If you check the online tutorials, we do talk about them. They're called links, but we're not going to worry about those today. Okay, slash users, looks like that. ls-f slash users, three folders. Okay, ls-f where I am again. All right, let's create a directory, a folder, that we can use for this morning's tutorial. I'm going to say make a directory, mkdir, and I will call it toot for tutorial. Now, when I hit enter, the shell goes, finds the make dir command, and runs it with the argument toot. It doesn't print anything because it doesn't have anything to give back to me. I didn't ask it for any information, so it doesn't give me any information. But now, if I do ls, I can see that I've got a new entry, toot, right there. If I want to make it easier to find, I could say ls-t. Dash t means give me the listing in time order. So you can see that toot is more recent than library downloads, movies, and so forth. This file, first.record, by the way, is the recording we're making of this tutorial. So it's always going to be the most recent thing. It's being updated every 10 milliseconds. So it's probably going to be the most recent thing every time I do an ls-t here. OK. If I do an ls toot, that will show me what's in toot. Toot is a folder. So just as I was doing ls slash users, I could do ls toot. There's nothing there. That's a freshly created directory. I want to go into that directory and do my work there. So I change directory, that's cd, into toot. All right, let's check that, that worked. pwd, print working directory, now says that I'm in users Mozilla toot. That's my default location unless I specify another one for all of the commands that I'm going to run. So now that I'm in this directory, I can do an ls. Yep, there's nothing here. What if I wanted to go back up? Well, I could cd to slash users slash Mozilla. That's where I was. But that's a lot of typing, particularly if I'm nested a long way down. An easier way is to say cd dot dot. 
Dot dot is a special directory path that means go up one level. I'm back in users Mozilla. CD toot. I'm back there. CD dot dot. Yep, I've gone back up a level. So wherever you are, dot dot means go up one level. It's a shorthand. It's a very useful shorthand. Let's go into toot. There's nothing here. Our next step is going to be to create some sort of a data file that we can work with.